a lot of people argue about what the best time in sports really is. And I mean, many people have a very good argument for certain times. Some people like myself might say that the beginning of college football is some of the best times in you know, any time of the year for, for sports. Some people say that maybe right around the College World Series is a great time for college sports or just sports in general. Maybe it be, be the, the, the actual World Series for the MLB. Whatever the case may be, we all have a difference in opinions. But some would even say that right now is a great time. Maybe not the best time, but a great time in sports. And a big reason for that being is that we have not just one set of playoffs to watch, not just two, but we've also got other tournaments going on and leading into more tournaments going on. We're going to talk about the NHL playoffs, the NBA playoffs tonight, and very soon, hopefully, uh, especially if we can get Blake on with us, we are definitely going to make sure that we talk about some of the other tournaments that, that were going on. Uh, I'll just go ahead and mention the, the softball tournament this past weekend was phenomenal. I got to watch my Sooners win the Big 12 yet again. Uh, and so it was, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, others are looking forward to the, the college tournaments going on in college baseball. Um, but right now, we have NHL and NBA going on. So we're going to discuss all of that. But before we do, first, got to mention an amazing sponsor of ours, one that we love so much, and that is SeatGeek. Because SeatGeek is amazing, whether you're a fan of live events being sports or theater or music, whatever the, the, the case may be, you know how challenging it can be to find the best tickets, the right tickets at the right price. And that's where SeatGeek comes into play because with a seamless mobile experience, uh, you can go on to SeatGeek and they allow you to buy and sell tickets in just a couple of taps. It doesn't get any easier than the way that SeatGeek does it. But it gets even better because SeatGeek also grades every ticket from red to green. So you know that the, the, the tickets that you're finding are exactly in your price range. Uh, so you look at those red ones knowing that that's not such a great deal. And you can get a better deal by looking for the yellow. Uh, and even if, you know, if you're looking at a yellow dot, then you know you can go and search for a green. And the darker green that it is, the better deal that it is. So it makes it so much easier to see that. Not only that, but it shows you a blueprint of the entire, entire arena. You can see the view from your seat before you buy them. You also know the price up front before you check out. And that's one thing that we love about SeatGeek. They don't try to scalp you and, and hide some of those extra fees in there. Um, and on top of that, you can also know that you are shopping completely securely with SeatGeek because every every uh, purchase is completely secured and fully guaranteed so you can shop securely with knowing that not only your personal information is going to be safe but also knowing that those tickets that you buy are going to be real tickets they're going to scan in at the gate at the door wherever the case may be and we love SeatGeek so much that we have teamed up with them to make sure that we can get you guys $20 off that's right $20 off your next ticket purchase with SeatGeek by going to SeatGeek.com or downloading the SeatGeek app today go check them out they're an amazing way to buy tickets the best way to, to buy tickets you go to seatgeek.com or download the seatgeek app and use code r2to and get yourself 20 dollars off that's an amazing deal and it definitely brings down the, the price of those tickets uh, i've used seatgeek so many times and i really don't like using hardly any other app or, or website to buy tickets because seatgeek is just so much easier and most of the time you can find the best prices on seatgeek so go check them out seatgeek.com or you download the SeatGeek app today. Very easy to use. Uh, it's extremely quick. Uh, just a couple of taps, you get your tickets. They're right right on your phone. So you go and scan them in right at the door. You don't have to worry about anything. Make it so much easier on you. Uh, it's already stressful enough going to, to a live event, whatever the case may be. So download the SeatGeek app on your phone today. Use that code R2TO at checkout and get yourself $20 off. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the only co-host for the evening, but not the only co-host on the show. But, Jeremy, how are we doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Then leading off to what you were obviously talking about between playoffs, I mean, you you say for for your playoff prediction being the best time, then for me, I have to say, honestly, there's no there's no other time like NHL playoff hockey. That's that's just me, but that's that's being – Pretty sentimental just because obviously I'm the hockey guy in the situation. But outside of that, the NBA playoffs have been ele anything but boring. They've been completely electric. Um, then even obviously, I know we're going to we're going to bring back up the two minute drill for tonight. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Blake like you mentioned at the top of the show. But unfortunately, it just is what it is. Blake the show has been must missed. go on. Exactly, the show must go on. So I'm going to cut the chit chat, Josh, and let's get kicking with it. 
Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's been so much going on, and it's been really hard to keep up with all of the playoffs with everything else going on. Uh, life goes on. For those who are uh, you know regulars to the show, you know that uh, we've been off for a little bit. I've had a long, uh, nice trip. You know, being able to get away uh, and just be able to kind of put everything aside. I, I I started packing my my laptop and my iPad, everything, kind of getting everything together, and I was like, you know what? going on vacation. I'm texting the guys right now. We're not, we're not doing any, any podcasting. I'm not, not paying attention to social media too much. Uh, and I'm just going to go and enjoy my trip. Uh, we watched quite a bit of sports still on the trip, had a, had a wonderful trip down to Tennessee. It was a lot of fun. I uh, got to do a lot of fun stuff and just Tennessee is just such a nice place. Uh, shout out mm-hmm. to Jake Crane as well. Uh, he gave me some, some great recommendations. We actually tried a piano bar that was extremely fun, uh, really good piano players. Uh, and then, People kind of got up for karaoke and stuff, so that was a lot of fun. But uh, we are back. We're going to make sure that we keep on keep things going. Uh, and on top of that, also uh, got to bring this up. Now let me pull up the date so I don't get it wrong, because um, there's two dates that I have in my mind, and I can't tell you the second one. But the first one, if you are a fan of the show, we want to let you know that if you're in the Omaha area, uh, with us joining Herd at Sports, one of the biggest perks for us is that we get to do a live event at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill in La Vista, Nebraska. That's the Omaha area. So go come check us out if you're in the Omaha, Nebraska area. Come check us out at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill on May 24th. We'll be live at 6.30 p.m. Uh, you should be able to go to rising2.com slash live. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash L-I-V-E. Go check that out, and you can actually book uh, it's completely free to go, so you don't have to spend anything, but you can purchase a seat, uh, and I guess book a seat uh, for free. Uh, that way you can sit there right in front of us and watch us live. We're going to be talking about the Big Ten spring football. We're going to be touching on the other conferences here. Uh, and starting this week, I think, uh, as long as everything works out, we're going we're gonna to work out the schedule either this week uh, or obviously next week. We're going to start going live on Fridays at 6.30 p.m., uh, and that's cent- Central Standard Time. So 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're going to start going live to talk about the spring football for all these college football teams uh, and conferences. Uh, next weekend, we're going to talk about the Big Ten because we're in Big Ten country around here. So we're going to talk a little bit about Nebraska. Uh, and I don't know if Iowa will come up or not. I don't remember if they were on the list. But uh, we'll, we'll definitely be talking about Nebraska. If, if we get enough Iowa supporters in there and they're chanting, we might we'll, def- we'll, we'll definitely throw it in there. We, we may not be completely prepared, but maybe we'll get it get prepared for it just in case you guys show up. Um, but make sure to check us out. That's May 24th, so it would be a week from this Friday at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, and we will be live in the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill. It's extremely excited. This will be our first live show there. Uh, and so it'll be a lot of fun. We hope to see many of you show up and show your support. Uh, and if you can't make it this time, don't worry. There will be plenty of other opportunities to come see us live there. We're going to make sure to keep this a pretty regular thing if we like it, uh, if we if we get some good support. And the first couple of shows, we've got two bookings right now, the first one being May 24th at 6.30 p.m. We've got some other ones coming up as well, too. So stay tuned for all of that. But let's go ahead and get into it, starting off with the NHL playoffs. Like you said, Jeremy, there really is no time like playoff time and hockey. Uh, playoff hockey is just so much better than just about any other playoffs, honestly. like If, if I'm just talking about watching the games, uh, I think the entirety of the bracket of March Madness is the best postseason event as an event as a whole, but each individual game is so much more fun for hockey. That That's debatable, um, sure, but I think you and I would pretty much agree with that, right? Oh, without a doubt. You, if you said <laughs> otherwise, I'd call you a flat liar to your face, Josh. But I mean, <laughs> going going off, obviously talking about the NHL playoffs, like you mentioned, looking at the current standings for what the playoffs is. Obviously, Dallas is up on the Colorado Avalanche two to one in the series as of right now. Well, let's let's and, start with that series too, because I want to start okay. over there in, in the West. Uh, so Perfect. yeah, I mean Dallas Dallas up two to one over the Avs. That one kind of took me a little bit by surprise. They're going to be playing tonight. Uh, and then also my Rangers going on right now. I meant to get it up on the TV, but I'm just kind of keeping an eye on the score. So if you see my eyes drifting off, I'm still paying attention to, to <laughs> you and everyone else. But I've got to see what the score is going on there. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, the the Dallas being up 2-1, to one, that, that took me a little bit by surprise. But we talked about this matchup ahead of time. The, it, we knew it was going to be a fun matchup because it's so it's two very similar teams. And, and I think you're the one that actually brought that up. And I'm like, man, you're totally right. It's like a mirror image 
uh, of these two teams, how fast they score. We saw that game one. Game one was crazy in this one because I, I believe Dallas went up three to zero really quick, uh, and then mm -hmm. the, the Avalanche came back because uh, I fell asleep in that game. So it was a really late game, and I was like, oh, it's it's over." Uh, so I, I fell asleep, and I'm pretty sure that was the same night that the Rangers went to double overtime, and I was up late watching that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, this this whole series has been insane. Um, but you know, with with Dallas leading two to one right now, uh, let's see, tonight would be uh, back in Denver, uh, so we're going to be back in the Avs home home arena. Uh, I mean, how how do you see this one going right now? I mean, are you are you leaning one way or the other? Because personally, I I still feel like the Avalanche are going to pull it out. I I just I'm I'm not going to give up hope on them. But the Dallas Stars are just looking so tough right now, and they're flying all over the ice, being very aggressive. I mean, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I wouldn't be surprised if this is another series that honestly would go to Game 7. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I, I guarantee it probably will. I mean, it, if I anything, put my money on it. I, w I would put my money on it too. If not, Game 6 would be a complete flip of the switch, but I sincerely see it being the Game it, 7. Yeah, 100% but... Game 6. Uh, I guess right now as it stands, I mean – I guess if it, won, I, I, it could go game five, uh, but no, I I, I, I don't expect that to happen. Six six is a is a must. I think that's one hundred percent. Game seven is like a ninety five percent to me. Absolutely, but I mean, talking a little bit about this series, like you mentioned, this both of these teams for Dallas and Colorado, it's just been absolutely barn burners of being able to watch. It's it's just hard yet alone to watch the puck already when you're watching on TV or even if you're at a game sometimes. But with how fast both these teams are, it just makes it even 10 times harder to watch just because you really see the former um, the former Colorado player, uh, Matt Duchesne, obviously playing against his former team, Colorado. That was always a fun time to see him playing against his former teammate. Then um, looking at the Dallas Stars, obviously, for Robertson, Ben, you could, the list just goes on and on and on. I mean, both these teams are are truly, if, in my doubt, the top two fastest teams in the postseason as of right now, Josh. But, I mean, you, you talk about the scoring abilities and the capabilities for what both these teams are able to do on the power play or even on the penalty kill. It's just been absolutely mind-bogglingly you see these passes that you wouldn't even see in the i mean you could see them in the regular season but you don't necessarily see them in the postseason well, that's, making, yeah that's that's one thing about playoff hockey that i think just brings something out in each player you're you're mm -hmm. fighting for the cup uh, and so they they take it very seriously i mean game one with this one was like we mentioned four to three went to overtime uh game two three five uh, and then, you know, and the Stars won game two. And then game three, again, Stars come out firing, uh, and, and they win game two, uh, you know, th or three, five. But then they win game three, four to one. And so, like, they, it feels like they're really taking an edge. But it also feels like maybe the Avalanche have gathered themselves. Uh, they've they've got a fresh, you know, fresh fresh breath, you know, fresh legs underneath them. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think they're, they're building up to try to take this one. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to see them take – Two in a row here, uh, and then Dallas take one. Game come down to Game Seven and go to overtime. Uh, I mean, that, this one's this one's shaping up. I mean, I, I want to shout out Nathan McKinnon right now, man. He's he's playing phenomenal right now, and we, we didn't expect anything less, right? No. So yeah, I mean Nathan McKinnon looking absolutely amazing. Um, but let's go over to the other game in the West real quick, uh, and then we'll jump over to the East. Uh, we've got Vancouver up two to one over the Oilers. When this series started. I thought for sure the Oilers were going to take it by storm. I thought the Oilers were just going to whoop up on the Canucks um, because, I mean, it, I, I felt like the way that the Oilers started off in, the, in round one, they were looking very tough. Uh, I didn't think that, that the Canucks really stood much of a chance. Like we mentioned, the Canucks took everybody by surprise this, this entire year. Uh, I mean, they've got some good some good players, and, you know, they've, they've got the guys to, to build around. Uh, it's just – this isn't a team that's used to being in this position. Uh, and, and so, you know, what's what's going on here? But then, you know, so we start off game one. Uh, that one was a crazy game, high-scoring game, 5-4. to four, Canucks took it. Uh, game two, the, the Oilers came back, took it 4-3. Game three, Canucks took it again 4-3. So, I mean, it's been neck and neck, high-scoring. Smash the over. Uh, that's one thing I can, I can guarantee you uh, is that you're going to be just fine if you smash that over. Um, but, man, I mean, this has been a really fun game. Uh, I did see, uh, who was it? Somebody got got uh, suspended for, I think, at least one game. Maybe I have oh, the notification um, still on my phone. But somebody got suspended 
Um, Carson Sousey. He got suspended. Yeah, yeah, so he got suspended one game for cross-checking Connor McDavid back in game three. So that's that's kind of a big deal. You don't want to get, get guys off the ice when you need – that's the thing in, in hockey is that you need a, a, a deep depth. You know, you, you need you need depth. Uh, and without that, it, ter- it turns into being a really difficult game. I think that's why the Rangers are doing so good this year because I don't think they're overpowering – the way that, you know, the, there's been a lot of comparison. We'll talk about that uh, coming up. There's been a lot of comparison with them to the 94 Rangers. I don't see it because back then they were they were killing everybody uh, and just dominating. They're not really doing that this year, but they've got the depth, and that's one thing that you, you lose a couple of guys, and it can, it can start to hurt you. Definitely. I mean, you get on that train to where you start to lose bodies, and depending, obviously, on the person, they could be – they can be the guy on the power play or they can be the guy on the penalties on the penalty kill or just even obviously on his regular shift with his normal line. I mean, he can be that make or break guy, but looking at the Vancouver Edmonton series, this is definitely one where I was, I I remember you specifically saying, don't correct me if I'm wrong, but where did Vancouver come from? Yeah. I mean, this is definitely something to where I knew Vancouver was obviously there up in Canada, but I mean, for what Vancouver has been able to do this entire season, and yet alone the postseason, you look at what they did in the regular season. They proved so many people wrong and say, "Hey, we're still a team here up in Canada. We can still we can still do this thing." But I mean, like you mentioned, these pl- this playoff series has been high scoring. Smash that over. I mean, like you said, five to four first game, four to three the second game, and overtime, four to three in the third game, and. I honestly want to say I wouldn't be surprised if we see another four to three game, but the winner of the game, it could be anything, but you, you can never know, obviously, in the playoffs. But if you're talking about hits for suspensions, obviously getting a one game suspension, I don't necessarily know if you saw this or not, Josh. I mean, I assume you probably have. It's probably been yeah. floating around on social media, but I'm going back to the Dallas Stars Colorado series. The hit that Jamie Ben delivered behind the net. I'm going to make it really fast. Do you think it should have been worth a suspension or no? I mean, it's it's borderline. I don't really know where you consider the suspension on that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, so, I mean, it's it's borderline. I mean, but to me, you, not in the playoffs, not in the playoffs. I'm not I'm not suspending a guy for for a cheap shot unless it's very bad. You know, um, I'm not suspending a guy for a cheap shot. Like like uh, Dumba last year. I think it was last year. Yeah, Dumba had Matt that Dumba, big yeah. hit on Pavelski and, and took his head off. That I can understand. You know, you went way too far, took it way too high. You launched yourself at him dude i mean that's if, if you're in the nfl you're probably ejected all season for targeting uh so you know stuff like that sure i don't know i, mean, I feel like the, the cross checks that i've seen and the, the one you brought up on uh, the dallas the dallas uh, avalanche series and then this one i don't i don't know i feel like I, i'm not i'm not gonna suspend him but it is borderline yeah, it's to me when I saw the hit initially first, I sincerely thought it was worth a suspension just because yeah. in him the regular his season speed, I agree with you. Playoffs I, I don't know, I'm just I'm I'm too much on the on the side of let, let it play. Him play. Out. Let it play yeah. out. Yeah, but I mean, the only thing that mainly caught me was just him lifting his feet and obviously the shoulder to the head contact. That was my initial thing. I'm like, to me that should be a penalty all day, but I mean, uh, like and it said, didn't injure him too bad, so I mean that's the only. Yeah. I mean, if you it, like, like I said last year, Joe Pavelski was out for like two games. Yeah, uh, I mean that that affected the series. So that that's why yeah. I can understand that. This one, uh, I I mean, he might have come out for a couple of plays for like a little while, but I mean, he wasn't yeah. he wasn't out for for very long. The thing is, though, at least they reviewed it instead of yeah. at least letting it go. That was the thing that at least made me a little bit more satisfied and they reviewed it. But there's a reason why we're fans, Josh, and we don't make the calls here. But going on to our next series, which one do you want to talk about? The Florida? Yes, I mean, we, we talk about we talk about those two uh, in, the, in the West. Those are coming down to the wire. Uh, and then Absolutely. you go over to the East, and they're not coming down to the wire at all. I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the Florida-Boston. Florida is taking over Killing there. It. But we're going to start with the Rangers. That one's not close when you look at it. Three to one, the Rangers have it. But the first three games, uh, or I guess first game, Rangers took it by one. Uh, that was a very close one, having to come back. Uh, and then game two, again, having to come back, pushing it to overtime. Uh, and then game three, or let's see, it was game two was second, two, two overtimes, right? 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then game three, another overtime win. Artemi Panarin coming away with a with a score when I told you I, th I don't think he had a single shot on goal in game two. Uh, he might have, but I don't recall ever seeing him get a clean shot on goal. Every time that he got the puck, they were swarming Somebody him. Somebody was swarming him. I, I, I think the Hurricanes have the right formula to beat the Rangers, uh, and, and it proves because they've been close in every single game. They, they've only lost by one point every single game that they've lost on the on the three three uh, that they've lost, and they won by one point in game four because uh, that one was four to three in the first time, uh, finally breaking that, that streak. Uh, for you know, so so Igor didn't didn't get to live up to the to the streak that his uh, his guy on the bench Jonathan Quick had. I think Jonathan Quick had 32 or 34 in a row uh, playoff games with with allowing three or without allowing more than three goals in a playoff game. So I mean, really long streak. I think Igor got up to 29, 30. Uh, I think Close 30. Around that, yeah, that 30. So I mean, he he got up there great, a great streak. Couldn't quite beat his his guy on the bench, which I thought that was hilarious that you got the two best goalies you know playoff goalies in recent history um on, on your team but uh you know the hurricanes have what it takes to beat the rangers but the reason why they're not going to beat the rangers is again it comes to that depth uh and again i'm not comparing them to the 94 rangers the way i'm seeing a lot of social media compare them it's not the same yeah they went seven and zero in the playoffs that's a really good streak to have in the playoffs but i mean they're not killing anyone they didn't even really kill you know they weren't they weren't putting up like a a four point a deficit on uh you know even on the on the caps whenever they were playing the caps they're only winning by one point here and they're not scoring a lot they're just very methodical uh they've got a pk unit that is just on fire they do not let the other team score uh this whole series i mean i feel like this entire playoffs they've been without a man it feels like for more of this playoff series than just being straight up five to five you know five on five so their pk unit has been phenomenal and then also their power play unit going out there and scoring goals when it matters the most. And then on top of that, just Igor stepping up. Game two was 100% Igor Shosturkin stopping every puck flying towards him in the net. He had like over 100 shots towards the goal. Uh, and then I think there was like 59 shots on goal, something like that. So, I mean, just the dude has been phenomenal in, the, in this series, and he's been the, the game changer for sure. Literally, Igor is the New York Rangers right now. He's been absolutely dominant ever since the playoffs began i mean igor the best way i can honestly describe igor right now is just a straight up brick house i mean he's been playing he's absolutely lights out i mean that's coming from a washington capitals fan i mean if if i didn't have to root for the washington capitals another team i would root for for the playoffs was definitely be the new york rangers in the situation i mean literally from what Kreider and fox and and artini Panera and everybody on that New York Rangers roster has just been absolutely clicking and they've been playing amazing hockey as of right now. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, Josh. I, I know I texted you this the other night, but if they keep this momentum going like this, they have a really, really good shot at winning the, at going to the finals and potentially winning the Stanley cup this year. And I still, I still yeah. st stick to my point with that. Well, and especially the fact that, so I was talking to my uncle the other night and I was like, man, I really hope Boston pulls this out because I think, I think we can beat Boston. We're pretty easy, but he's like, "No, I want the best." And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, I get where you're coming from, but just beat Boston and move on." You know, like, that's the way I'm thinking. I want the I want the easiest so I can just win the win the yeah, whole thing and be cool. done. Um, but he, he's right. It, it's best to to play the best in order to be the best. Uh, and so Florida, I mean, Florida is going to be tough. Uh, so I mean, that's that's really hard, but. The Hurricanes have been absolutely phenomenal, uh, and we're out. With, we're without uh, Kittle and uh, Blake Wheeler. They've both been out, uh, and then yeah. you, you still have uh, Wenberg, Gustafsson, Wenberg and Truba have all been kind of day day by day, kind of watching mm -hmm. how much you can you can put them in. Uh, and so they've been they've been playing. And I just looked it up too. They're playing tonight again, uh, and it looks like they're getting decent minutes. So uh, not too much to worry about there. But still, you've got guys banged up. That's what makes playoff hockey so much better. You don't see guys sitting out in games. Uh, no. The way that you do, maybe over in uh, you know in basketball, uh, I'll call them out, or uh, uh, even 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 in football it's at times. But hockey is the toughest sport. You can't change my mind. Outside of combat sports, hockey is the toughest sport. Um, but let's move on to the last one, uh, and that's I don't even know if there's much to talk about. Boston against Florida. Uh, Florida lost one game, and it kind of felt like maybe there was a little bit of rust 
Uh, and then they came out and whooped them 6-2, or sorry, 6-1, 6-2, and then 3-2. They're going to play again tomorrow night, which would be tonight when you guys are playing. I guess let's go back real quick. Uh, so Rangers playing right now at this tie game going into the second period. What's your pick on that game? You think they close it out 4-1? to one? I wouldn't be surprised, Josh. I, I, I could definitely see the New York Rangers getting at it, but my thing is for – if you get buys in front of Igor, I know he's a brick house, but there's still that potential where the puck can get deflected and the puck can go in the net. I mean, obviously, they were the big name they were talking about is Jake Getzel getting in front of the net, or yeah. um, obviously Brett Burns getting a good shot off from the blue line. But I mean, obviously, a lot of the things for the Carolina Hurricanes have to go right for tonight just so they can be able to live to play another day. But if nothing I'll goes call, right, I'll for call them, it. I say, I say it's going to come down. It's going to come down to the wire. I mean, there's no doubt about that. It's going to be low be scoring, it goes to um, road but I, I think it's it's back at MSG right now. They're playing in Madison Square Garden. I think they close it out uh, tonight. I think it's going to be four to one, and that's that's the toughest four to one I have. I think I have ever seen, at least that I can I can recall, uh, yeah. as close as that's been. But moving on to Boston, Florida, uh, Florida has just been dominating. Boston got the one good game in. It feels like Boston had a little bit coming back there in Game Four, but man, this one feels like another one. Four to one. I feel. I think. I think the Panthers closed out in, in Game Five. Um, it is back at Boston for the next two games, I believe. Uh, so uh, you know, it, it should be. Let me let me check real quick. So I've got this pulled up. Looks like it's no. It's it's at Florida. So it, Florida, Boston, does does Florida. hockey go two two one one one? one, one. one. Okay, yeah. okay. Because I I keep on getting mixed up uh, with basketball. They do two 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 one. I think. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how how the NBA does it. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I guess tomorrow night we'll actually be in Florida. Uh, so, I guess tonight when everybody's watching this. So, uh, I, I guess stick stick to my guns. I think they closed out 4-1 to one and put up a put up a good show in front of their, their fan base. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, Josh. I mean, but and without- I believe I believe they're uh, they're without Marchand as well, right? Yes, they were without Marchand. I mean, to me, to be completely honest with you, Josh, with how I've watched Boston play – these last couple of games, to me, it just seems like Boston has just been playing really chippy and really dirty. I mean, you look at how the beginning of the last game went on within the first 15 seconds. What's his name getting absolutely obliterated from from the Boston player? And I mean, take I give him a lot of credit because I've taken a couple of those hits like that before. You get back, get right back up really fast. But I mean, those hits will definitely ring your bell. But I mean. Florida, with how they're playing, they're playing lights out. They're playing, they're playing like they have the the series on the line. When obviously they have some breathing room, being three to one, obviously up in the series. But I wouldn't be surprised if Florida pulls this one off tomorrow, and um, or as you watch this today, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they they do it again. Then Florida is definitely going to be is they're going to be back in the final four easily in this situation, but. The one thing I will have to say is, Josh, remember the last year with what Boston and Florida did, it was just like this kind of a situation where it was, yeah. they were up three to one. Then all of a sudden, your next thing you know, they're in game seven. So it can As go. As Michael one Scott would say, oh, how the turntables. Yeah, turn maybe. Maybe that's the case. And you know what? Maybe. Like, I, I think that would be fun to watch Boston come back and do that. And I do think that Boston would be a tough opponent. But to me, it's like, man, we're, we're going to take Boston. You know, it's uh, but Florida. Florida's a tough team. I think I think it runs through Florida right now. The way that they've been so hot, uh, the Rangers just keep things too close. It makes me nervous. Uh, I'm not, I'm not feeling the confidence that uh, it's it's a it's the cup. The cup is ours. I'm not feeling that confidence. But uh, I feel like it's going through Dallas on the West. Uh, and you know, if, if the Abs can win that one, I think they take it. But it feels like the Dallas Stars are going to win the West. And so I feel like Dallas and then the winner of Florida and, and uh, the Rangers. But we'll go ahead okay. and move over to the NBA. Uh, some people are basketball fans, even though they're pretty weak over there. You know, we, we're hockey fans more. So it's it's tough watching them flop all over the court and whistles being, you know, called every three seconds for breathing on each other uh, and, you know, getting ejected for, for whining at the ref. Uh, that happens a lot in basketball. But – we're still basketball fans a little bit, right? Uh, so we'll we'll, we'll look bit. over there. Uh, I, I guess we'll start off. Let's let's go ahead and start off with the games that are happening tonight. Uh, so not really west or east, but we'll start off with the one that's happening right now as we're talking. 
and it looks like Boston, the Celtics, are up over the Cavs. 55 to 53, I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to look, I'm pretty sure they're without Spider Mitchell. So Donovan Mitchell is not playing for the Cavs, which that shocks me that that game is that close right now, and they're without their best player. Uh, and so yeah. that that makes me think a little different about how this series may wind up because I thought for sure Boston would take two in a row, close it out, uh, move on because it's it's obviously going through Boston in the East. I think that's pretty easy to pick, especially seeing how the Pacers and Knicks are playing right now, which I don't think the Pacers are that good, uh, and they're tied two to two. But starting off with Boston Cavaliers, uh, you know, so Celtics versus Cavaliers. Celtics are up two to one in the series. They're playing right now a very close game. Uh, I mean. Right now, it just feels like Boston's just not giving everything where the Cavs are the other way. Cavs are putting everything into it, wanting to move on. So this is a, a really tough, tough one to call. I think that I think Boston pulls it out, uh, and I don't I don't have too much too much uh, concerns about them pulling that one out. But I, I will say, Jason Tatum has been showing up uh, much better this postseason than we have seen him in the past. Uh, and then you're also seeing Drew Holiday come out there, almost like that sixth man feel uh, out there on the out, out there on the court a lot. Uh, and so mm-hmm. uh, I, I will give it to to the Cavs. Uh, you know, you look at the guys that they've got. I think like Chris LeVert is looking really good and sticking in there a lot. Uh, and uh, am I, yeah, Chris LeVert, yeah, he's 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 with the Cavs. Uh, I'm I'm getting I'm getting players mixed up so much because I don't pay attention to the NBA close enough to remember when they switch teams, which happens every three days. Um, but yeah, Chris Levert, he's been showing up and, and playing big for the Cavs, and I think he's been keeping keeping a minute. Uh, Evan Mobley is just a, a monster out there, and so uh, I, I think he's been another big part. And then, uh, uh, like I said too, uh, Donovan Mitchell, the biggest player for the Cavs. Without him, I really question if they're going to be able to move on. But uh, it looks like they're keeping it close tonight. It's a one point game right now as I'm as I'm refreshing. So uh, ultimately, I think Boston has what it takes. I think they're the tougher team, and they end up moving on. Definitely. I w- I'm in the same boat as you, Josh. I wouldn't be surprised seeing Boston be able to move on. But my thing is, I understand Boston's obviously the number one seed. Then Cleveland's the number four seed. The big thing that I always stress enough is don't let that number in front of your team say anything just because you can see obviously anything come out of this postseason. I mean, some pl- some people get that mindset, oh, we're number one, we're going to be undefeated. Then turn around, next thing you know, you're down two games to none. But, I mean, with the way that Boston is playing, obviously, they've been playing really dominant. Like you said, for Jason Tatum, he's been putting up great numbers. Um, honestly, the Drew, the Jason, the holiday situation that that's kind of sentimental, at least to me a little bit. I mean, um, obviously you look on the rest of the roster, the roster, like white Brown, like a lot of their normal stars, they've been putting up really good numbers. And the thing that obviously blows my mind the most is how much times I hear the whistle, just because you hear a different foul almost every time they bring the ball down to each end. But I mean, that's besides the point, but I can definitely see Boston coming back and and carrying it away with this situation, Josh. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't have a doubt that they're going to win the series. I feel like that's pretty. Con- I'm pretty confident in that. I would probably put money on it, but uh, it's just the way that they keep it close is what makes me nervous. Um, yeah, that's but true. you know, they're, they're keeping it close without their best player that really carries the team. I feel like, um, but you know, one one thing that I I noticed. So, uh, and and we'll bring this stat up for the rest of the games. But I'm pretty sure I saw a stat. If I remember correctly, I think it was the team uh, that wins the rebounds. So, so if you're winning the boards, they are 43 and 11 in the postseason right now. So, I wow. mean, if you can win the boards, you're going to win the game. And I think that stands true for a lot of these teams. And we'll talk about it for a couple of them where where it really stands out. But I feel like the Celtics winning the boards is what matters the most, especially right now when you're really just trying to play keep away and win the game. It doesn't matter if you win it by two or win it by 40. You just want to win the game and get out and move on to game four or uh, sorry, game five, I guess it would be, uh, and then and then win that one. Uh, so, you know, it's just trying to move forward. But going over to the Pacers, Knicks, this one has been just I, – I can't stand to watch it. I can't. <laughs> it's two sloppy teams. Uh, and I just – I don't trust either of these two teams. I I said we were going to go over to the Thunder Mavs, but I, I want to stick stick in the East and finish it out with the East because the Thunder Mavs haven't started yet. So starting off with, with the Knicks, Pacers, man, I mean uh, it was last night. They, I, I tuned in a little bit to try to see what was going on and – 
it was just ugly. I, I don't like watching this kind of basketball where one team should win and then the other team blows you out and it just back and forth because game one started off really high scoring, 121-117. I guess that's kind of normal for today's NBA. Um, but then, you know, Knicks took that one. Game two, Knicks take it 130 to 121. Then you flip it back around and the Pacers take it uh, and, and win, win by five points in game three. And then they come out and win 121 to 89 last night in game four. I mean, this is just – it's it's just one team you – know, I feel like the Knicks played really well. Jalen Brunson coming in, I think it was game two, if I remember right. It might have been game three, uh, coming in and helping them with a big-time comeback. Uh, and, and I think it was like a 31-point deficit. He got injured, came back in the second half, helped lead him. Uh, so, I mean, Jalen Brunson is a dog. But then you look at him last night. I mean, they just held him in check. I don't, I don't know if it's that injury kind of bothering him a little bit. Uh, and he couldn't get much going. I don't know what the case was for him last night, but, I mean, you see what he did last night, and he really didn't do much. They kind of kept him in check. I think he only had 18 points. Uh, just not not a great showing for him, but this is just a sloppy one. I don't care who wins this series because they're going to lose to Boston, in my opinion. All I'm going to say is whoever wins the series, congratulations for playing the least sloppiest out of this series. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean – uh, I watched a little bit of the game the other night, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you. It was kind of it was hard to watch just because of how sloppy it was. But I mean, you look at obviously the individual players for for what they're able to at least put up on the board. Looking for the next side for um, for Hart, obviously, then even um, uh, Pertenstein yeah. or even. Um, Brunson for down the point guard position. I mean, I understand you, you got to do your job and you got your, your, uh, your set things that you need to do. But I mean, this is just on one side. I can speak for both sides of the ball. You really have got to clean it up. Well, and, I mean, and I, I understand that the Pacers have a good squad. But yeah. The Knicks, I mean, the Knicks, as surprising as it is, the Knicks are the better team. And so, I mean, they oh, should be cleaning up this series. And the fact that it's tied 2-2 two to two the way that it is, you know, and the fact that they're letting the Pacers run all over them and clobber them, and then they come back, and then last night they just let them clobber them and they laid down and let them clobber them some more. Uh, you know, it's just – it's been a sloppy one, but tied 2-2. Two to two. Uh, I mean, do, do, you ha- do you have a winner? Do you think one team pulls out and wins it? I wish I could say neither, but um, <laughs> if I had I'm, to I'm say I'm feeling one. game seven Knicks. Yeah, and you know how crazy New say. York's going to go if the Knicks end up winning Game Seven. Oh, Have you man. seen some of the social media clips from them going crazy and like throwing a big I've, old, you know, big old fit over how good they're doing? I've seen some, and if they go into that situation, um, you might. I mean, it's it's going to be like Philly 2.0. <laughs> I was just going to say you might want to put the state of New York on lockdown for how crazy <laughs> it's going to be. But. Yeah, I mean that that series. I, I I don't I don't I don't really like watching that series at all. I feel like. It's been hard to watch. But going over yeah. to, to the West, I feel like the West has been really fun. Very confusing, mm-hmm. starting with the game that's going to be happening later on tonight. Uh, we got the Thunder down 2-1 to one to the Mavericks. This is surprising to me because, that. yeah, the, the Thunder are so good this year. So young, so talented. I don't know if it's outside noise getting in and distracting them. I don't know if maybe they're getting their head, you know, getting getting ahead of themselves uh, and, you know, going coming into this with a big head, thinking they're just a better team so they can win. But, you know, they start off with a great win in game one, game two, uh, they fall short, and then game three. Uh, I mean, it just felt like, it, it, I mean, with without Kyrie doing anything a lot of the time, too, and that's that's what kind of shocks me. I think it was game two. I'm going to pull this up real quick just to see. Um, yeah, game two. Yeah, game two, they held. So, Luka got hurt, uh, and I believe, I believe it was game two. He got hurt, came out, and Kyrie was held to just nine points. And the Mavs wow. still beat them. The Mavs still beat OKC. So, I mean, that can't happen. Last night felt like just a really tight matchup. And honestly, it just feels like Luka's got their number. Uh, I mean, it just feels like Luka comes out here and just plays the best game. Uh, and so it's just – it's one of those things where I, 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 I wish I had the answer for how to slow him down, but he's just an animal on the court. Uh, and, and he's just going to keep on keep on putting up 20-plus points every game. Uh, and I, I think – you know, and then of course, with when when you allow Kyrie to put up twenty plus points too, on top of what Luca's putting up and doing, uh, I mean, you you've got to slow one of them down. I think slowing down Kyrie is the 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 better choice, because I think that's 
not really easier to do, but I think it's obviously you can do it. You did it in game two, uh, whatever it was that I just said that they did it. I believe it was game yeah. two. Um, it was so in game I, two. I think I think you can do it. Um, so I think slowing down Kyrie and then trying to keep Luca, you know, contained as much as you can, but focus in on one guy because that's that's obviously the two guys that are going to put up the most. And then on top of that, you've you've got to get your guys. You know, like Shea uh, needs needs to score more. Uh, you know, and you've got to get. Uh, you know, Chet down down low. You know, you get, you've got to look for these guys around the court and try to get get things moving for them. And it's just not happening uh, right now. I mean, it's it's been kind of a Thunder team that just doesn't look as aggressive as they were in that first series. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the big thing that I, you mentioned that I was going to bring up: if you can stop Kyrie and and Luca in that situation, then you're going to be sitting pretty decent because obviously, with what a, what Kyrie alone is able to do and you just look at Kyrie Irving's career and just what he's been through. Obviously, throughout the throughout all the hate and backlash that he's been through, and obviously I'm not going to get into full de- detail on that because obviously we're just going to stick to talking about sports here. But, I mean, um, for what Kyrie has been able to do, and he still obviously is a great basketball player, then obviously you look on the other side of the bracket – or on the bracket, but on the other side of the team, excuse me. I mean, it's just so hard for – once you get Luca down in the paint, I mean, it, it's hard. Obviously, just trying to get the ball anywhere, not to go man. Like he just he he pops it up. Well, and, and then the, like you disrespect him, he's gonna come back and, and oh, man. put that back in your own mouth. He's gonna he's take gonna that bad you. taste and put it in your mouth. I mean, he's he's an animal. I don't I don't know what you do to stop him, and he's he's the biggest factor for the Mavs. So I mean, as as long as he's healthy. But the thing is with the Mavs, man. I mean, they're just they're so banged up right now i I feel like okc is gonna get ahead and i feel like they're still gonna pull it out and i'm cheering for him i like okc um and it's it's hard to cheer against luca um but you know it's it's that that's a fun series for sure and another fun series over in the west i think the west is by far more dominant um because you've got okc the mavs are looking really good right now all of a sudden Uh, and then you've also got the minnesota timberwolves against the denver nuggets two two teams that the winner of this one could win it all I, i i have no doubt in my mind that, that either of these two teams could win it looking phenomenal down the stretch and then coming into the playoffs. Uh, I think the Timberwolves were the best team in the regular season. Uh, and then, you know, going against the, the, I believe reigning champs, right? The Denver Nuggets. Uh, so, you know, and just looking at everything that they've got, I mean, Anthony Edwards has been on fire, but then slowed down quite a bit in the last two games, which really goes to show uh, first two games, Timberwolves took them uh, both pretty, pretty sizable margins. Uh, 106 99 and then 106 to 80 um, but then they fell short I felt like the nuggets just were extremely aggressive uh, and started getting those boards in in game three uh, and then game game four another close one uh, the Timberwolves lost 115 to 107 I honestly think the winner of game five wins the series in game seven I don't think anybody's going to win two in a row again you had two in a row for the Timberwolves two in a row uh, for for Denver uh, and I think it's going to go back and forth so if the I, I think the winner of game five wins it in game seven I think it's going to go to a game seven it's been that competitive um but the thing that has that gives me hope that the Timberwolves can win this is that they've got that two big play with with Cat and then Rudy down down low and seeing those two work together uh I was I was talking about this uh with with somebody I don't remember who I was talking talking to about this here recently it was probably on the trip might have been one of the guys I was I was seeing uh, on our vacation, but uh, whoever it was that I was talking to, I was, I was talking about how this Timberwolves team, like I don't remember seeing two bigs this way since uh, who was it? It was uh, the Spurs with Duncan and Robinson, I believe. Um, uh, yeah. And so you know, like looking at it back then, or even uh, Pau Gasol uh, over on the Spurs, you know. So I mean, it's just like that's that's how long it's been since I've seen this. Uh, not only that, but did you know that the the Timberwolves owner, the current owner of the Timberwolves, is actually the one that built who Denver is today. So he basically, really? he brought, he brought in Jokic, he brought in, uh, Jamal Murray. Uh, and then, uh, let's see who else did he bring in that he traded for? He traded somebody else. He basically built that team that they've got that he wasn't with them when they won the championship, but now he came over to Minnesota and helped build some things over there. I know he brought in Mike Connolly, made some things work to bring in Mike Connolly. That was a really good trade and, and prove, uh, proved to be really good too. Cause I mean, he's been, he, he's been a, a court general, uh, just outstanding, uh, passing all over the place. But, 
Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I mean, it's just if you can if you can get those two bigs for Minnesota to close out and and get the boards over Jokic, I think you've got this, and I think they can come back and win this one. Definitely, but I mean, ever since you and I got the opportunity to go up to Minneapolis and see the Minnesota Timberwolves play in person, I have became more and more of a Minnesota Timberwolves fan. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I've watched basketball before, but I've never really attached to it. If anything, maybe the Boston Celtics. But um, after going to watch the Minnesota Timberwolves play up in the Target Center, that was definitely a trip. But I know you and I will be banking again. But yeah, after, great, great atmosphere. Absolutely. That, that place is second to none. But, I mean, going back to the playoffs. But, I mean, this both of these teams have just been playing unbelievable basketball. I mean, Obviously, you talk about Jay McDaniels, Car- Cat. Obviously, that's Rigo that's the Bear. toughest one to pick a winner. Even with OKC down two to one, I feel like it's, it's so easier. It's pick. easier to pick OKC to win than to pick a winner out of this this Denver oh, uh, Minnesota game. Without a doubt, I mean, it, it, there's not a single person that obviously doesn't put a hundred percent effort into it on the court here. But I mean, my my big thing is I would like to see Minnesota. I, this sounds weird, but I'd like to see them clean up even more a little bit. But, like, don't get me wrong. They're already playing great ball, but there's still obviously little itty-bitty things that they know they can clean up here. And, obviously, you look at the Denver Nuggets situation. I mean, uh, like you said, for Michael Porter Jr., uh, Gordon, um, Jokic. I mean, it, the, these teams have just been playing absolutely lights out, like, this, they're playing right now, in my honest opinion, they're playing like this is their last game that they're going to play in this game. And they're thinking that they don't have a game tomorrow. They're thinking that, obviously, this is the one-and-done situation. And That's how you to have me, to play every game when it gets tied 2-2. Two to two. Exactly. That's what I was just going to say. You have to play that mindset. But, yeah. I mean, if I had to pick a team that honestly can – I honestly want to see the Timberwolves pull this thing off. and whoever I, I wins want this... to see them pull it off, and I think they've got what it takes to do it, and I think they've got the right chemistry in, in their team. I think that they it goes to, it flows so well. Mm-hmm. It just feels like Denver is going to find a way. It's going to be tough. It just feels like they're going to find a way. But uh, that's pretty much all I've got on the NBA playoffs as well. You want to move on to the two-minute drill and kind of speed through oh. this one? Oh, without a doubt. We'll make it a, we'll make it a minute-and-a-half drill tonight. Minute-and-a-half drill for... since it's just me. Exactly. First things first, obviously tonight, starting off with a minute and a half drill. Um, Bronny James has officially been medically cleared to play in the NBA. But, Josh, there's a lot of people talking. After drafting Bronny, for whatever team does, do you see them getting a shot with them signing LeBron and having LeBron 1 and having LeBron 2 playing on the same team? Or what do you think? I mean, it's it's all making sense, and it's all piecing together the right way. Um, because LeBron called this out a long time ago, but now the the coach killer himself got another coach fired there in the in L.A. So, I, I mean, it, it makes sense because I mean he's he, maybe he's on the market to go look for a new team right now. So if somebody does draft Bronny, although I will say, I think it would be a huge mistake to draft Bronny. I mean, he scored I'm pretty sure less than six points per game, um, and he was like four. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you, you might be right. It might have been less than five. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it, regardless, it was like low single digits, mid mid to, mid to low single digits. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I don't think he's ready. Uh, he he is reportedly going to play in like the five on five, uh, you know, little practice runs that they do, and he's going to compete in the the combine. Which maybe he maybe he shows up for that and proves us, proves me wrong, bro, but. I just don't think he's ready for it. Um, but if he does get drafted, I, I think I think it's got to happen. I mean, I don't know how you don't get LeBron over when he's the one that that made it. Ha- you know, he's the one that that spoke it, uh, and I think he's going to speak it to existence. I mean, he's got control over it. He's he's the 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 current goat. Uh, I'll say that much. He's he's current the current goat. I mean, I guess maybe you could say that, that Jokic is now, but uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. a that's a, a a a debate to go on for another day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a definitely a debate to go on with another day. But moving on to our next one, we're going to go back to the NFL a little bit. After, obviously, the draft and everything that's occurred, then you see teams starting to get these rookie practices and stuff. But a lot of people are still saying the Chiefs are the number one team to going into the next season. Josh, what do you think about this accusation? Do you think they are? Or do you think there's some other teams out there that definitely deserve a look? 
No, I mean, other teams deserve a look for sure. I think there's some other teams that added quite a bit, uh, and, and I think they, they're building something up. I think there's going to be – you're going to get like a Texas A&M type of overhype with the Bears. Uh, and so <laughs> yeah. I, I think they are the Texas A&M. This, the, this year they're going to be the Texas A&M of the NFL – uh, where all the hype goes into them, they're going to win it all because they got Caleb Williams and they're going to flop. Um, no, going over to the Chiefs. I mean, I, I don't think you can. You, I, I think they are the best team. I mean, they've they've got a majority of their team returning. Uh, they got rid of some wide receivers and they brought some wide receivers in. Uh, you talk about so, given Rishi Rice, if as long as he can keep himself out of trouble. Uh, I saw somebody post something about uh, Rishi Rice's uh, lawyer when he gets a gets another call from, that he's been in trouble and it's uh the, the clip from liar liar where jim carrey just picks up the oh phone my and says, god stop breaking the stop law <laughs> so oh my i mean that's that, that's literally what's going on with him he just keeps on getting in trouble but if he can stay out of trouble you think Rishi rice what he did last year and how speedy he is then you bring in marquise brown who is a, another speedy receiver and then on top of that you've got xavier worthy who you just drafted I mean, two of those guys is enough. So maybe even if if Rice is in more trouble, but the fact that you've got three guys that are like three you of maybe th- three of the, maybe the top top five fastest receivers in the NFL right now. I, I mean, it, ar- arguably so. That's a dangerous team, and you just fixed. Uh, you know, maybe maybe not, but you just fixed what most people would say was the biggest issue for the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. So I, I I like I like their their odds quite a bit. I mean, I would. Maybe maybe I'll go in right now and see what it is and, and sprinkle some cheddar on the on the Chiefs winning it all. Hey, you can never know, but at the end of the day, I'm still going to say who they Bengals. But go on to our next topic. Um, going obviously to UFC, we can talk about this guy named Sugar Sean, Sean O'Malley, mentioning on Bradley Martin's Raw Talk podcast that he would be willing to move from 135 to 155 in order to fight Conor McGregor. Josh there's been so much talk about bumping up for Sugar Sean to fight Conor McGregor. The thing is, do you, if this were to happen, do you expect it to be a one round done thing, or do you think this could go the distance? No, I don't know, man. I mean, you got two tough dudes. You got Conor with. I mean, I, I, I would. I'm not going to make a prediction now because right now, honestly, I've I've got to go with the youth and say Sugar Sean would whoop Conor McGregor right now because Conor's been out of it. But when 303 comes, and stay tuned, we'll talk about 303, trust me. Mm-hmm. When 303 comes and we see what Connor looks like when he comes back in, and what they're, they're fighting 175, I think, somewhere, somewhere around there. But, I mean, they're, 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 both, they're both looking jacked right now, jacked and tanned. Yeah. So if Connor comes out and proves himself to be what he used to be and bring himself back in and looking mighty fine, Personally, I'm saying Connor just stay out of the UFC, win this one big, knock Chandler out, win big, and let me just live on knowing that Connor was maybe not the greatest he of got. all time, but he was one of the greatest and and definitely the biggest game changers. But if this were to happen, Sugar Sean against Connor, can you imagine the amount of viewers that are, are going to be tuning into this? They're they going to have to TV. they're going to have to up their up the ante for how much you know, space, what, whatever that's called, the, the, you know, the speeds that uh, they're, they're d- displaying this and everything, because uh, yes. the, the, the app is going to be bogged down for sure. ESPN yeah. better, better get a lot more servers out there for sure, because uh, this is going to go insane. This would be, so currently I saw the Chandler uh, McGregor fight broke the, the, 20 get, the 20 million. million gate. The Sugar Sean McGregor would break like the 80 million gate. <laughs> it's it would be the biggest show. I would love to see it, um, but I hope Sugar Sean just stays in his weight class, defends his belt a couple of times before going anywhere. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, moving on to our next topic. This one, this one hit close to home, but a lot of people were expecting this. Iowa women's basketball coach, the Lisa Boulder, announces that she is officially retiring from from. Iowa college basketball. I mean, Josh, you look at what she was able to do, especially with um, these last three years with what Caitlin Clark and the entire Iowa women's basketball has been able to do. It's been anything but extraordinary, obviously. I mean, they've been able to put up some unbelievable things. And who do you, if you had to give a guess, do you see 
it, do you see a big change in Iowa basketball, or do you think they're going to keep that momentum going? Yeah, I think they lost at least two or three. I think three of their starters. Because I think yeah. Gabby Marshall. Um, Caitlin Clark, Gabby. Caitlin, yeah, Caitlin Clark, and then I'm trying to think of that other other girl's name, too. I, she's um, really good. Uh, I can see her face, and I can't think. Uh, um, but I'm, I, I know for sure they lost three of them, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Gabby Marshall left, too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, without Caitlin Clark – I don't think they were going to be as good as they were without Caitlin Clark. Honestly, Caitlin Clark carried that team. Uh, anyone can get mad at me for saying that if they want. It's just the facts. Go look at the stats. Um, you know, fa- you know, facts don't care about your feelings. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is huge. I think Elisa uh, Bluter. I mean, she was a legend, legendary coach for Iowa, doing what she did the last two seasons, finding the talent in, in Caitlin Clark and bringing her over. And just letting her loose, knowing the, that the game plan is going to go through Caitlin Clark, that's that's talent in of itself as a head coach. So I mean, they're definitely going to be hurting because they lost star players, but now you lost your head coach. Uh, yeah, that that sucks to see, but uh, I'm I'm really happy for for uh, Coach Bluter that she was able to move on and and retire, going out on top. Absolutely. I mean, wish well, obviously close from us, we're close to the top. Close, I was to say close to the top, but I mean, we wish nothing but the best for Coach Blue. But moving on to our final top, but this is the one that we've been waiting for the most on. Yeah, I, know I forgot you and I to upload the picture, that. so I, I'm, I might no! have to edit it. Um, whatever the case no. may be. But have you seen it? I have. I was ecstatic when I saw the picture. I'm, I'm gonna but, send. I'm gonna send this to you too, just so you can you can yeah, look at it I while mean, we're talking about it. As much as I would, I know Josh, you're going to obviously send it to me right now, but yeah. the picture doesn't do the justice, ladies and gentlemen. If you get the opportunity to look it up, it's it's pretty awesome. I and, mean, I, I have spent so many hours just staring at this in disappointment. What? Total disappointment. Not a single, I don't see a single Oklahoma, I see a Nebraska flag in the okay. background. Okay, here I, we go. I mean, I see I a Texas Longhorns, Quinn Ewers. Uh, no, I don't. I, I'm I'm disappointed. I want to see Oklahoma. You know, you're putting the big brands in. Where's Oklahoma? Because I think you guys are forgetting who Oklahoma is. I'm staring at it again too, uh, just because I, I love looking at it. Although I will say I love the fact that you see, uh, you know, you see uh, Quinshawn Judkins over there in the Ohio State. Yeah. That kind of gave me a little bit of chills because yeah. I'm not an Ohio State fan. But my my wife's no, uh, she's a Buckeye. I'll root for Buckeyes. Um, um, is that Carson looking Beck at there? in between? There Edwards might be an Oklahoma Hunter. over there, but I can't tell who that is. There's like a – now that I'm looking at it real close, that might be Oklahoma because he's got a Jordan glove right. on. So that – off all the way to the right side, right in front of the Washington player. I don't know who that is. Yeah. All, all I can see is one. But I would think if there's going to be an Oklahoma player, I would think Danny Stutzman's got to be your guy, right? That or Stoops. Well, I mean, but Stoops isn't playing anymore. So, I mean, he's, yeah, he's moved true. on. It's all current players. I understand right. that. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you yeah. see Carson Beck in there, Jalen Milroe. Uh, yeah. And then you see Donovan Edwards right up front, Quinn Ewers. Uh, and then you've got uh, Jenkins, uh, Hunter. Uh, Hunt. What's his first name? Uh, why, why am I drawing a blank? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but Colorado boy, Hunter. Uh, I feel really uh, stupid for not being able to think of his name right now, too. I don't, but, I don't know either. But <laughs> no, I mean, hey, th- this, this gets me so excited because this is the deluxe. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's going to be two other editions they're, they're dropping. I don't think they ever did that in the past. So I'm curious nope. to see what all of those uh, mean. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it might be just you get points and stuff like that with Madden. If that's the case, then I don't know if I'm all for that because I'd rather go and earn that. That's how I've always been. But uh, I'm so excited, dude. I can't wait. Uh, I told my wife, I said, as soon as they release the date, I'm going to get an, a, the, the new system because I still have the older Xbox, this last series. Um, so whatever hey, the who new knows? Xbox you might make is, a bundle package to where you buy the new game, you get the console. Hey, like, hey maybe, do it maybe. You want. Um, but uh, or I'll have to see what what uh, Blake plays because I know you have PS5, right? No, I have a PS4. Oh, you don't have a PS5? Oh, so nope, we both got to upgrade. Okay, so we got to yeah, we got to all three be on the same page. We got to all three be on the same page and get the same updated I'm system because we're gonna now. have to have an upgraded system. Um, but yeah, man, I'm I'm super excited for this. Anyone who grew up with uh, the NCAA games. Oh, man, I'm just I'm so so ready, and there's been so much more been been led on to us about what's happening. There's going to be several commentating crews. I'm extremely excited about that, um, and then there's going to be the Road to Glory. I saw that that they, they released that there's there is going to be a Road to Glory. There's going to be the the on. I believe there should be the online dynasty. If there's not on the online dynasty, there's going to be an uproar. 
uh, for sure, because that's I, I'm looking forward to that big time. But, man, uh, that's pretty much all we got for tonight. Uh, man, this, this has been a lot of fun kind of going through and catching up on all of all the stuff going on and all the major sports, uh, you know, touching a little bit on, on just about every one of them. That's that's when you know we've got a good show going, uh, whenever we're able to touch touch on quite a few of the major, major sports. Uh, not all of them, but most of them. You know, mm-hmm. so we've got playoffs going on right now. Uh, hopefully we should be talking some baseball coming up very soon. And then, like yep. I said, too, make sure to stay tuned in Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to start going live. I will get something out to, to let everybody know about that ahead of time. But hopefully we can start that this week. I'll see how the schedule goes. Um, but then next week on May 24th uh, at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, meet us at Herd at Sports Bar and Grill in La, in La Vista, not the Gretna. Uh, location it's in la vista uh so it's right there in the omaha area la vista so if you're in the omaha area you want to make sure to come out uh go to rising2.com slash live to reserve your seats they're free but you can reserve it to make sure that you get a seat in the room uh with us and i believe there will be a live band right after or towards the end of ours so might might want to come out and check it out anyways and plus it's an amazing sports bar and grill so why not go and check it out Heard at Sports Bar and Grill. Go to rising2.com slash live. Reserve your seats to come and watch us live uh, right in front of the stage. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and we plan to do this a lot more, especially if we can get more support and you guys doing it. Uh, you can make sure to follow us on social media. That's where we're going to post all the updates on stuff like this. So follow us on, on Twitter, Instagram, I guess X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all of that fun stuff. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and comment down below. Let us know what you're fit, you're most excited about with the new college football game coming out. Um, but comment down below. Uh, and then, of course, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts, give us that five-star review. That's the best way to help us out over there. Share us with a friend. Share us on social media. Tag us. Whatever the case may be, man. We appreciate all of you so much for all of your love, all your support. We'll see you next time.